Welcome to 9.4 Factoring to Solve Quadratic Equations. Our goal is that we can solve quadratic equations by factoring. So please recall, before we look at the zero product property, remember that in Chapter 8 I told you or showed you how to use the x method to factor a quadratic that has a leading coefficient of 1, you know, so something here. And then I showed you how to do the slide divide. If there was a number in front of the x squared, you would slide it over, divide, slide divide bottoms up, and then use the x method, etc. So that's just a little intro. We will be using all of that knowledge and material in this lesson. So now let's talk about the zero product property. If you were to multiply two numbers or variables, a and b, and the product equals zero. That means that a or b must be zero in order to get an answer of zero. Just remember, when you multiply by a zero, a number that's zero, your answer is going to be zero. So in this example, x plus three times x plus two equals zero. Well, if the product equals zero, then that means one of the terms that's being multiplied is equal to zero in order to get your final answer of zero. So let's do our first example. What are the solutions of the equation 4t plus 1 times t minus 2 equals 0? First step, rewrite the original. And now, in order to get our answer of 0, that means the first term or the second term must be equal to 0. So let's set both equal to 0. And then solve for the t. So here's a two-step, do the opposites. We did this like towards the beginning of the school year. Divide by four, t equals negative one-fourth. Here's a nice quick one. Add two to both sides, t equals two. So the solutions of this equation are t equals negative one-fourth and t equals two. So that means if you were to plug in either of those numbers for the original equation, you would get an answer of zero. And I encourage you to check your answers when you are doing um, classwork or problems on a quiz or a test. Solving by factoring. This time, this equation is not factored. You can note that the first one in example one was factored for us. Now, this time we are not given the factored form. So, rewrite and let's bring back the x method. Remember the last term goes up top, the middle term goes on bottom. You're trying to figure out two numbers that multiply to give you 15, but add to give you eight. So the possibilities for 15 are one and 15, three and five, and that's it. So which numbers add to give you eight? Well, the answer is three and five. When you multiply 3 and 5, you get 15, and when you add 3 and 5, you get 8. So now let's go and take those numbers, put them in parentheses. I'm hoping this comes back to you now. And it's equal to 0. Now, if your product is equal to 0, then that means one of the terms must be equal to 0. So set both of them equal to 0. And do opposites. Minus 3. X equals negative 3. Or minus 5, x equals negative 5. So that means our solutions are negative 3 and negative 5. That is the first option that we are given. Feel free to pause here if you need to catch up, and also feel free to rewind if necessary. Okay. <clears throat> Example 3. Write in standard form first. Remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c you can tell that in this given equation it's not in standard form. So that means we want to get everything over to one side of the equation. Here's the original. So I'm going to move this 18 over and now 4x squared minus 21x minus 18 equals 0. This is in standard form. Now take note or look at the number in front of the x squared. It is a 4. It is not a 1. So we first need to slide divide bottoms up. We can't go to the x method yet. So circle the 4, draw an arrow over to the negative 18, and we are multiplying. So that means we have x squared minus 21x, and 4 times negative 18 is negative 72. Now we are ready for the x method. So let's do it on the side. 
negative 72, negative 21. Remember from last chapter, when there's a negative on top and bottom, that means that one of the signs is positive, one sign is negative. So let's write down the factors of 72. 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, and there are more. Factors include 4 and 18, 6 and 12, and 8 and 9. So now let's take a look at all of those and think to ourselves, well, where does a negative need to be in order to add to get a negative 21? Well, this is not going to work. These guys are not going to work. Take a look at 3 and 24. If we were to put the negative in front of the 24, it turns out it does work. When you multiply, you get negative 72, and when you add, you get negative 21. So now let's take those two numbers and rewrite them. x plus 3 and x minus 24. Remember, this is called slide, divide, bottoms up. And between the, the divide and the bottoms up is reduce fractions. So slide, we did it. Divide, we did not do it yet. Divide by the number you slide. So divide by 4. Okay, we cannot reduce the 3 fourths. However, we can reduce the 24 over 4. That's going to give us 6. So last step, bottoms up. 4 goes in front, so we have 4x plus 3 and x minus 6. Now we're going to do our thing where we set this equal to 0. So I'm going to go up here and I'll change colors. 4x plus 3, x minus 6 equals 0. Set both of them equal to 0. The easy part's left. And solve for x minus 3. 4x equals negative 3. Divide by 4. x equals negative 3 fourths. So there's one of the solutions. And another way to do this, plus 6, x equals 6. So we find out that the two solutions are negative 3 fourths and positive 6. Remember, you can check these by plugging them in and making sure they work. Okay, our last example. Use factoring to solve a real world problem. This is involving a picture frame, which is a very common application to these kinds of problems. So. You are constructing a frame for the rectangular photo shown. You want the frame to be the same width all the way around, which makes sense. And the total area of the frame and photo is going to be 315 inches squared. What should the outer dimensions of the frame be? Well, <clears throat> take a look at the picture. The frame width is going to be x all the way around. So we need to figure out what x is going to be, and then plug that in. Now, let's talk about the length first. If the length of the picture is 17, and we're adding an x here and an x here, that's going to be 2x plus 17. Hopefully that makes sense to you. We're just adding the x's in front. Now we're going to talk about the width. Well, similarly, the width of the picture is 11, and we're adding two more x's, so the width is going to be 2x plus 11. Now, in order to find the area of a rectangle, we do length times width. Well, we, are, we just found out the length and the width, so we might as well multiply them now. 2x plus 11 times 2x plus 17, and that is supposed to equal 315. I'll just write right here, area equals length times width. Doesn't matter which one comes first. So now we learned last chapter how to solve this. We learned the FOIL method as well as the table method. And I think the preferred way was the table. So I will do that on the side for you. 2x plus 11. And 2x. 17. 
we're going to multiply. So we get 4x squared, 22x, um, 34x, and the last number is 187. Combine like terms in the middle. So that gives us, if it'll let me say on the page, 4x squared plus 56x plus 187. So I'll rewrite that right here. 4x squared. And you're thinking to yourself, boy, this is a lot of work. And you're right. It is the, the most involved problem, but you asked for the real world and here it is for you. Okay, we want to get zero on the right side. So in order to get zero there, we must bring over the 315 by subtracting. Everything stays the same except now this number is becoming negative 128. Okay, now look at that. All numbers are even. So I automatically think to myself, okay, if they're all even, then that means we can factor out a 2. And if we can factor out a 2, then maybe we can factor out a 4. The way that you figure out what number works is you kind of just do the GCF on the side. We learned that last chapter. Um, I'll just remind you, 2 times 2, 56 is 2 times uh, 28, and then split that up 2 times 14, 2 and 7, so that gives you, yep, that works. And then the last one is 128, well, that's 2 times 56, or 6 excuse me, 2 times 64, split the 64 into 2 times 32, split 32 into 2 five, five twos while I'm fumbling. And we circle the like terms and we find out that the GCF of all three numbers is 4. So what we're going to do is factor out a 4. Now, the way that you figure out what's left is You rewrite the items that are not circled. So let's look at that. x squared plus 14x, 2 times 7 times x, and then minus 32. Oh, good news, guys. We can use the x method because the number in front of that x squared is just a 1. Don't worry about that 4 at all. Negative 32 is going here. 14 is going here. Okay, factors of 32. 1 and 32, 2 and 16, hey, I think 2 and, two and 16 should work. Um, 2 should be negative and 16 should be positive. Because if you multiply, you get negative 32, and if you add, you get 14. So let's bring down the 4, x minus 2, x plus 16. We are getting really close to the end. Now... If these numbers are multiplying to get zero, that means one of them must be zero. You may be wondering what's happening to that four in front. Well, when you divide zero by four, you just get zero, so nothing's really happening with that value. You get x equals two, or x equals negative 16. So there's our two possibilities for our answers. Now, last thing, does it make sense to have a negative value for x if it's a photograph and a frame? The answer is no. The only reasonable solution is 2, because it's positive. So to figure out the dimensions of this frame, you just plug in the 2 for the original length and width that we found in the purple on the top right, and then the last that will be the last thing we do. So now I'll show you how to do that, and we will be done. Okay, so like we said, x equals 2 is the only reasonable solution because it's positive. So let's write that down. So the outer dimensions are 2 times 2 plus 11 and 2 times 2 plus 17. As you can see, we're just using these values and plugging in 2 for the x. 4 plus 11 is 15, and 4 plus 17 is 21. So that means the dimensions are 
15 inches by 21 inches. Okay. We made it. We did the hardest problem. Now you can feel free to try the lesson check for the section, or at least make sure you have the lesson check for 9.3 done. And I will see you very soon.